how is everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. Make her mine, I'ma make her mine. So don't make her mine, I'ma make her mine. In case you're new here, my name is Dutambiri and this is Sprinkle of Sad. So today on my channel, I have two guests. One of them is um, my classmate on the extreme left. Um, his name is Dishon. And then in the middle here, we have my dad who um, we're inviting here as a medical professional to answer all the questions that me and other people um, have on the coronavirus, okay? Yeah, so we have a bunch of questions that we're just going to ask and let him answer and then chat in when we have something to say. So it's going to be kind of interactive. And um, yeah, so let's just get straight into the video. First question, uh, what's the progression of the symptoms? From the onset, uh, from the onset to possibly death. Um, the disease is quite varied. It's good to remember that a good number of people will not develop any symptoms. Mm -hmm. Up to eighty percent of the people may get the disease and maybe never know they had it or get very mild symptoms. Most common symptoms are fever, a cough, and difficulty in breathing. Less common may be a sore throat, headache, pains in the joints pains in the rest of the body. Uh, the most severe symptom and that tends to progress is a difficulty in breathing. So you may get difficulty in breathing that gets worse. If it's very mild, uh, one can even be treated at home. Uh, if it gets more severe, then you have to go to hospital. If it gets really severe, you may have to go into the intensive or critical care unit. And unfortunately, uh, that's the leading cause of death in most people. So inability to breathe. Inability to breathe. Oh, okay. What is um, the origin of the coronavirus and can you get she infected once you're already infected? The first cases of coronavirus, uh, COVID-19 to be precise, uh, were in Wuhan city in Wibai province of China. Uh, there's many theories and sometimes speculations on exactly how it started in uh, Wuhan. Uh, one of the possible explanations is that it was a virus that existed in wild animals and then crossed over to become a human virus. That has been known to happen, where a virus jumps from one species and infects another species and becomes a problem for the new species, in this case for, for humans. Uh, this disease is still new. We don't know as much about it as we know about other diseases. The general expectation, like with most coronavirus infections, is that once you get infected, you develop some immunity that protects you uh, from another infection. Uh, but uh, increasingly there is now some evidence that some people uh, who have recovered from the disease are coming back with uh, reinfection. Uh, there's been a limited number of people so far. Uh, some of them are in China, uh, a few more are in South Korea. So we know it's possible to get reinfected. How frequently this happens, uh, how severe the second infection is going to be, we really don't know, but we'd expect it to be less severe than the first infection. Mm -hmm. So even if you still get the disease, it will not be as deadly as it was the mm -hmm. first time. Yeah. And can a mother who um, contracts the disease, can she transmit it to her unborn child if she's expecting this? Yeah, this is also something that uh, was of uh, great interest. Uh, fortunately, so far, uh, we don't have a case where an infected mother has infected her unborn baby, mm -hmm. which means that the placenta in this case uh, is protective and is not allowing the virus to cross from mother to the baby, which is quite fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Because children are more vulnerable. Um, no, not in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID is one of the diseases where, fortunately, uh, uh, children uh, don't appear to be more vulnerable. They are faring quite well. Uh, many of them. Uh, get away with a very light infection mm -hmm. and very few of them have gone on to develop severe disease. The only risk is that they can still transmit the disease even if they are not sick yeah. and so we are saying that um, unfortunately uh, we may not allow kids to spend that much time with their grandparents mm. because they could infect them. Yeah. So, yeah. Is it possible that uh, children are less likely to be really affected and their immune system is a bit uh, it's still not developed fully. Yeah, actually, for once, that uh, is proving to be an asset. 
other than a liability. So the disease causes problems in two ways. One is the virus itself. It does cause damage to the body. Uh, but then just as dangerous is the body's own reaction to the virus. So part of the problems that we see in patients are caused by the body's own reaction to the virus. The more severe the reaction, in the process it damages the body's tissues. So it is thought that uh, children, because they mount a less severe response to the disease, then they are not posing as much danger to their own tissues. So in this case, the immature immune system may actually be protected. Uh, the other explanation is that um, many children come down with colds very often and flus very often. These are caused by coronaviruses, not necessarily the COVID uh, virus, but related virus. Mm -hmm. And so the immunity is constantly being challenged. And so when they get this new virus, maybe they already have a degree of immunity because the immunity with one coronavirus may offer some partial protection against a related virus. So it could be helping them out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how bad is the disease and how does the body fight it off? Well, as I said, in most cases, the disease is actually quite mild. Yeah. And uh, more than 80% of the people will get extremely mild symptoms and may not even know they have the disease. Now, <clears throat> after that, there's a whole range of how severe the symptoms can be. As you've seen, some people will get more severe disease, they'll recover. Some will go to the critical care unit, they'll recover. Unfortunately, a small number, uh, maybe up to about uh, one to two percent, may actually not recover. So the disease has a whole spectrum, a whole range of severity, from the asymptomatic, completely no symptoms, to the very severe that can lead uh, to, to death. Now, the defense that the body has is to mount an immune response, and we hope it mounts just enough immune response to control the disease, but not too much to cause other problems. Okay. Yeah, because we say that part of the problem is caused by the body's own reaction being excessive. How is the coronavirus different from SARS? Yeah, so uh, there are a number of coronaviruses. They are all called corona because um, in their shape they look like crowns. Yeah. Um, so even SARS is one of the coronaviruses. So coronaviruses cause many diseases. They cause the common cold, for example. Uh, another coronavirus virus, uh, the influenza virus causes uh, the flu. And so this is the same uh, family of viruses. Mm -hmm. Now, this particular one is just a new coronavirus that has infected humans, but is not the only coronavirus that infects humans. But because the other diseases caused by coronaviruses tend to be mild, this is the one that has received the most attention. Yeah, so we say that um, SARS is caused by the SARS virus, and we are saying that uh, the current epidemic is caused by also a SARS-CoV-2 virus, okay? So it is SARS uh, coronavirus 2, while the other one was the original SARS virus, yeah. So there are two different diseases caused by two different uh, viruses, but the two viruses are cousins. Uh, yes, yeah, so they got quite a bit of uh, similarities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so SARS in food is severe acute respiratory syndrome. Uh, correct. Yeah. Yeah. How to correctly wear and use a face mask? Yes, yeah, so it's good to remember that the face mask, uh, its best value is actually in stopping the wearer from infecting other people. Mm -hmm. Okay? You may enjoy some protection by wearing the mask yourself, but remember the best thing you're doing is in case you're infected, is protecting other people. So the mask must first be the correct type of mask. Uh, it should have three layers uh, because that gives you uh, better protection. It stops more of what one is breathing going out and also um, what is coming in when one breathes in. Uh, the correct way to wear the mask uh, is actually quite simple and sure it covers the nose and the mouth there is no benefit wearing the mask on your forehead it's yeah. not helping <laughs> there's no benefit in wearing it uh, around your neck uh, or covering just your chin or while still carrying it in your pocket yeah it really doesn't help it must cover both the nose and the mouth okay. so um, is there a specific way on how to remove it like don't touch 
the mask part and you move it to the street? Yes, correct. Now, it depends on uh, the environment. If you're working in a healthcare environment, it's more critical the way you remove it because you're exposed to um, many other individuals who may be infected. So it's possible that you're carrying the virus on the outside of the virus. Mm -hmm. So when removing it, avoid touching the outside of the mask. Uh, remove the strings that may be behind you or around your ears, and then discard that uh, into an area that other people cannot access. Now, if it is your own mask, like the ones you're wearing uh, on the streets at home, uh, there's still that possibility, but the risk is much lower. You should still take the same precaution, but then this mask can be re washed and reused. Mm. Yeah, if it's a cloth mask, it can be washed and reused. How do you think the corona pandemic is going to affect all of us as Kenyans in the future? Uh, are you talking about health or general uh, Just lifestyle? Just general. What's your opinion on how everything is going to change? Okay, so at some point, uh, the health risks are going to reduce because a large number of people is going to, may have gotten the disease mm -hmm. and will enjoy some uh, immunity, uh, what we call hard immunity. So where a majority of people have the disease, then uh, the disease is not able to jump as rapidly from one person to the other because the next person is already infected and is, is already protected. Uh, now, <clears throat> because of the severity of the disease, this was not allowed to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was an interruption a deliberate effort to stop it from being transmitted to the majority of people. Mm -hmm. So majority of people are still going to be uh, naive to the virus, which means they can still get infected. They don't have any um, mm -hmm. immunity. So it's going, to, it's going to continue to be a risk. Now, we are under a partial lockdown. Many countries in the world, some have almost a total lockdown. And so that stops the rapid transmission of the virus and gives the healthcare system time to reorganize. For example, to get enough supplies, uh, to get enough equipment, uh, to expand their facilities, to cater for the people who may be severely ill. Now, in the future, um, even if we manage to control this phase of the disease, at some point, the country must open up. Mm -hmm. So people must go to school, people must go to work. Yeah. yeah. So when that happens, we still expect that there will be a lower level of transmission. So we might control the level of transmission using the infection prevention strategies that we're using, uh, wearing masks, frequent hand washing, uh, uh, maintaining social distance, all those beneficial uh, interventions. But there'll still be a level of community transmission, which means that it will not be uncommon to encounter somebody who uh, has the disease, even if it will not be in very large numbers. Mm -hmm. So the general uh, impact on society is that it may change the way we are used to living. Yeah. Social distancing might become forever, a, a forever yeah. or become a norm. Yeah. Maybe not forever. Some people are estimating it could go on for about two years. And after that, a majority of people will have got the disease and will now have immunity. Mm -hmm. But we will not see the kind of spikes and the very bad outcomes that we are seeing because the healthcare system is better prepared. Yeah, and some countries have actually um, had very few controls. They are hoping that people will get infected at a controllable rate and like, develop immunity. Sweden is one of those countries. Mm. Yeah. So in short, it's better, it's beneficial for people to be infected so that they get immunity. Uh, it, it would be. The, the problem is that the rate at which this virus is infecting people is so fast, mm. it can overwhelm a healthcare system. Okay. So if one million people get sick over a three month period, the healthcare system cannot cope mm -hmm. and many people will die. Mm -hmm. If a million people get infected over a two year period, mm -hmm. the healthcare system will cope. Okay. Yes, because yeah. when you go to hospital, you only a, a, a small number of you. Mm -hmm. The supplies are there to deal with you, the equipment is there, the beds are there, the staff are there. Yeah. But if you get all these people getting sick at once, then you really cannot uh, give you care to them. And that's the reason for wanting to control it. So when is this pandemic most likely to end? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I don't think anyone really has an exact answer. Uh, learning from what happened in China, which is where the disease started, uh, it did uh, start off uh, in November. Uh, it trained through January and uh, February and got controlled uh, towards uh, early March. So that means the cycle was about three months. 
So for us, we can say uh, we've had our first case on the 20th of March. So we are looking at April, May, and June. And I would expect that by that time, uh, we flatten the curve. We've, we can say we are on top of the virus. Uh, whether that's going to happen, I cannot 100% guarantee, but that's basically part of the thinking. Mm -hmm. So do you think as a country we're, we're doing a good job to try and flatten the curve so that by at least June, everything is going back to normal? Well, I think uh, government is done well. The strategies put in place, I think, are working. Mm -hmm. And what proves that is the numbers that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. By this weekend, the prediction that would have about 1,000 confirmed cases, uh, we're just under 250 today. Uh, that could be partly because the control measures are working, but also we've not done enough testing as we'd have wished to confirm that these measures are actually working. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for that has been uh, limitations in getting the test kits because everybody in the world is trying to buy them mm -hmm. so then there's not enough supply mm -hmm. um, so that could be working now um, where we need to do more is at individual level but because still many of us don't understand that these restrictions are for our own good so we are going uh, trying to break the curfew uh, there's a partial lockdown to enter the Nairobi metropolitan you'll find people trying to up through the forest uh, to access to get you know out of the Nairobi metropolitan uh, really that can frustrate the effort so as much as uh, the health authorities are uh, giving out guidelines and uh, directives on uh, how to protect ourselves we as individuals must also take personal responsibility for our health because in the end it's a small sacrifice but it uh, wards off a very big risk of contracting the disease and maybe getting severe disease uh, so why is it that the elderly people and people with pre-existing condi pre -existing conditions, uh, for them the disease is much more virulent than the other general population? Yes, now uh, older persons, and um, it also ties up that people with uh, other underlying health conditions already are compromised in their in their functioning. Mm. So you would find, uh, for example, the lungs may not work as well as in younger people. Um, if somebody has already suffered, uh, let's say, a chest condition, and so their lungs are compromised, maybe somebody has a heart condition, so the heart is compromised. So because of that, the organs of the body already are compromised. So they are starting off from a position of disadvantage. So when you load them with this infection, then it becomes too much for the organs. And so that's why you find that people who are older uh, are at that higher risk. You know, because they don't have the same resilience, the same reserve as young children, for, for example. And uh, that's also the case for any other chronic condition. It becomes a risk just because of that uh, fact. Okay, thank you so much for joining me on my channel, The Both of You. Thank you, Dr. Mary, for your um, insight in this um, coronavirus pandemic topic. And hopefully, through all our efforts and following the government's protocols, we are able to flatten the curve and by June, yeah? Hopefully. Hopefully, by June, we'll be able to go back to our normal life just like we were before. Hopefully, with more caution and maintaining the hand washing and all of that. I hope uh, we'll be able to say something nice at the end of all of this because it's really hit all of us business-wise, um, social-wise, in all areas of our lives. So it's not only you who's been affected, so stay home and stay safe so that you can also protect everyone else in the community. So that is the end of today's video. I really do hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram under Tabiri or at Sprinkle of Sass, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!